Welcome everyone back to Fun with WebGL 2.0. In today's lessons, we're going to deal with transformations, and at the heart of it all are vectors and matrices. On the screen right now, I have a file called math.js. It will contain all the objects we need to handle our transformation mathematics. All it is is our vector 3 and our matrix 4. Um, you will actually need to go to the GitHub and actually download this file for today's lessons because I'm really going to step through because it's beyond the scope of this lesson. Uh, a good amount of the matrix 4, especially all its static functionality, actually comes from a library called GL Matrix. Uh, I'll put a link in description to actually if you want to download the whole library. But the whole library is not really compatible with uh, the today's lessons because I do actually download the code, but I do modify it and use only a small subset of uh, its functionality. And I do use it in a different way a little bit. So we're better off using the math.js file that I have for this uh, lesson. So just go to GitHub, download it, and you'll be ready to go. So let's start off by creating our transform.js file. At the very top in the constructor, you'll see our first um, properties, and it's position, scale, and rotation. Those are going to be vector threes that will contain the main numeric values that we need for our transformation. Uh, position is a straight up any number, traditional, you know, one through whatever, and even negative numbers. A uh, scale is a multiplier. So we start off with all ones because let's say if you're a size two and you multiply one, you stay at two. If you want to be, you want to be two times the size, you say, you know, two times two is four. Or if you want half the size, is 2 times 0.5 would get you 1. So scaling is a multiplier. So any number between 1 or 0 and up will do the trick. And then we have rotation. And rotation is going to be based on degrees instead of radions to make things a little easier to deal with. It's a little harder to see and visualize 45 degrees in radions than it is in actual degrees. So in our library, we will be able to save all the rotation uh, axis in degrees, and then the library will actually convert that into radions uh, when it's doing its mathematics. And these are vector threes. So that means we are defining our three components, which is x, y, z. So position, scale, rotation is all based on those three uh, values. With our vectors defined, now we're going to start talking about our matrices. And in case you don't know what a matrix is, it's this array that's defined by rows and columns. And it kind of allows you to handle like these large, complicated equations in one go. So ideally, our position or scale and rotation are going to be all combined and compressed into a single matrix that will handle all three in one go when we transport it into our shader and it handles it at a per vertex level. So our mat view will be our main matrix that to handle the transformation of whatever object that this transform belongs to. Then we have mat normal. Mat normal is a little bit different uh, because it's a matrix defined by uh, three rows and three columns instead of four rows and four columns. And um, it's only for normals because normals need to be transformed in a different way because uh, normals are directional based. So they just need to be transformed based on rotation and scale but not by position. And that's what makes it a matrix three because that little extra column and row that's been chopped off is what handles the position uh, transformation. And to finish our constructor, we have three vectors, but instead of actually being an actual vector object, they're just raw float arrays, but with four elements. And you might be wondering why is it four elements? Because when you're dealing with um, doing matrix math and combining things, so f most of our transformations are based on matrix four. And to do vectors with matrix, they kind of have to be equal uh, in a sense. So if it's a matrix four, we need an array of four elements. So um, when dealing with positions, we always have that W component. And if you remember correctly, when we create a vector th uh, four, in our shaders, we always add that extra component to our XYZ, which we usually put 1.0, 1, 1 which is our W component. It's really there to help uh, define uh, a position when you're doing the mathematics. Like I said, matrix math needs to be equal in a sense of how many columns and rows that can be related to each other. 
<coughs> so that's why we have a four. And the fourth component can be used for certain things. Like if we make the fourth component equal one, it means position. And if it's a zero, it's a direction. It kind of changes the mathematics around a little bit. But most often, you really need is that one and leave it at that. So back to our vectors. These are just directional vectors. It will Every time we do a rotation, our direction changes. So if we start rotating around, our forward and our up and our right vectors change. So we're going to store the change every time we update our matrix. So this way, we always know which way is up, which way is forward, and which way is the sides. And if you want to ever want to get the opposite direction, like if you want to get down, you just do the inverse of up. And the only way, to, the easiest way to do an inverse of an of um of a vector, it just times every single component by negative one or just by negative. So if it, the number in there is a negative, it becomes a positive. If it's a positive, it becomes a negative. That's the exact inverse. And these are direction vectors, so that means they're all normalized. So the numbers within each component will be, to be between 0 and 1. Now we're moving on to our update matrix function. This is going to be the big part of how the transformations are going to be handled. As you can see in the very beginning, we have uh, MAT4 being reset. And then we'll start applying all our um, vectors by calling its mathematic functions. So the first thing we do is we add our translations, which are, is our positions. And then we start doing rotations in the specific order, and then we do scale. Now, it's very important the order of how you do these things. If the order is off, uh, things don't behave as you expect them to behave. Uh, this is what kind of screwed me up for a long time. That I, The order is actually scale, rotate, then translate. But when you actually code it, you have to do it backwards. For example, if you ever dealt with uh, transformations and rotations before, um, the order really dictates what effect you're going to get. Um, if you rotate first, then you translate, that means you rotate your object, and then you kind of move it at that orientation. But if you move it first away from origin, then do a rotation, you'll see it'll actually rotate around the origin. Kind of, You're kind of like orbiting the origin instead of just rotating and then moving. So you get two separate effects depending on the order in which you um, apply it. So that's the reason why we're doing it this way, um, which looks counterintuitive because we are adding a translation before we're doing the rotation, but it does work the way it needs to work. Uh, in the, when we're dealing with matrix math. With our main transformation out of the way, then we start taking that matrix and then converting it into a matrix three for our normals. It's just another function call and that takes care of that. And then we finish it off by taking our matrix again, the, our main one, and then determining which direction are we currently pointing at now, like which direction is up, f forward, and right. And that's pretty much it for our transformations, because at this point, we've done all the rotations, we've dealt with our normals, and now we know what our directions are. The rest of the object is pretty easy. Uh, you know, update direction is just a copy, because uh, we do use it uh, for cameras. So that's why update direction is there for a specific reason. And then we have, uh, you know, our getters, and then we have a reset. And at the very end, we have um, a constant called degrees to rads. It's just there so this way so you don't have to calculate every single time because sometimes we have to calculate these matrices in the loop. So if like anything you can kind of take out that's not needed, like you can cache a certain value. So, you know, if you, it's like a mathematical uh, thing you can do that's happening very often, make it a constant. So this way you can just reuse the constant. So this way you're, n you're not wasting CPU to uh, uh, calculating these mathematical numbers. Now we're going to start moving on to our model.js file. Here we're going to start adding our transform to our model. Uh, and th that's what you see in our constructor. We're, gonna, we're just going to create a new property in our model object. It's called transform. Now we're going to start adding some functions that will make things easier uh, in the long run, especially since they're chainable. That makes it easier for us to manage. Uh, we're just setting our scale, our position, and a rotation. And then we're adding scale position and rotation. Uh, there's two separate things uh, just to make things easier. So one just sets it, it just sets that that specific value 
an ad just adds to it. So if you want to just like uh, start appending values, like uh, if you're kind of like moving, add position is the, the function you want to do. You just add to what's currently there. So if you want to keep moving at a certain pace, you just keep adding to that specific axis you're moving. And most often, you're just going to be moving in uh, position Z or position Y. And then the last big change is on pre-render. Uh, so when it's time to start rendering, we call pre-render, and that will then call our update matrix function on our transformation. So this way, once it, we're ready for our shader, we, we get this value all set up and ready to go into our shader. Now that we're done with our model, we're going to start moving into our shader.js file. And one of the first things we're going to change is our uniform location which was originally just an empty struct. Now we're going to add a new another function that gets our standard uniforms. Moving forward, we're going to be dealing with three main uh, uniforms. That They're all matrix fours. Uh, they're going to be our model view, which is our model's transform, the camera, and the perspective. And as just as I described them, we have a set of functions just for those specific matrices that we're going to append to our um, shader code. Because it's be very common because those are the three we're going to need the most and very often. Now our final change to the shader class will be inside our render model function. The only thing we're going to do is set our model matrix to our shader as soon as it comes in. So we're just going to grab our view matrix, apply it to our shader, and then just continue doing our regular business. And now we're going to finish by going to the bottom of our shader util class and we're going to add our get standard uniform locations function. As you can see, we're getting our three our three matrices and we're getting a main texture too because down the line we are going to deal with textures and it's also going to be another uniform that we're going to deal with. Now we're done with this file, let's move on to our viewer.html page so we can start getting some things rendering on the screen. So right now you see I have some things already highlighted. So at the very top, we're going to start adding our math.js file and our new transform.js file. And then on our load event, as you can see, we're going to update our gmodel uh, line of code, and we're going to start messing around with our transformation. So we're setting a scale, a rotation, and a position. Then on render, we're just going to add the pre-render before we pass the model into our shader class. If you remember correctly, that pre-render is when our matrix is finally updated with all the transformations that we applied to it. Um, when you're dealing with a game engine, this is probably not the best time to do our updating for our matrices, especially since we need to know our direction. But for now, this is how we're going to do it. Uh, if we ever do evolve this into a game engine, then we st we'll start updating our matrix more often and way before we start rendering. So now we're going to move down to our vertex shader and start updating that to start getting things rendering. As you can see, I added, we're going to add our uniform uh, model view matrix which will handle the transformations coming from our model. And then we update the GL position with the multiplication of our matrix. And this is the reason why we're converting um, our vector 3 into a vector 4, because in multiplication, we need them to be equal. So it's a matrix 4, and to do uh, multiplication with it, we need a vector 4. Now if you go to your browser and refresh, you'll see that our grid from our previous lesson now has been scaled, has been rotated, and has been moved to a different place in our canvas. And there you go. That's all it takes to do transformations. But you know what? We can't end it here. Uh, we got to have some fun with everything we make. So let's get back to our uh, view.html page and go to our onRender function. Uh, here I have a bunch of numbers that I'm messing around with. I kind of know what I'm doing, but at the same time, I don't know what I'm doing because I'm really just messing around and changing things. Like I'm grabbing the angle, and I'm going to um, add a degree to the cr whatever angle we have uh, per, per second. And then I'm getting its radius so I can change uh, how far it is. And scale, I'm messing with scale. And I'm for s f just for fun, I'm basing scale on angle. So as the angle changes, so does the scale. So once we have all these numbers kind of just calculated and figured out, uh, we update our our shader line of code. And as you can see, I actually have two samples of it, and it's really based on coding styles. So the part that's commented out is your traditional line-by-line -line, uh, 
way of coding. So, you know, this way we apply our scale, our position, and our transformations. And then the part that's not commented out is the same code, but done using our chaining functions in a chainable way. So it's th they both do the exact same thing. So for every uh, frame, we're updating our transformations, updating our matrix, and applying it back to our shader. And if you go back to the browser, you'll see that our, now, our grid is now animating in an odd, weird way. It's going all over the place. It's resizing. It's rotating. It's moving position. It's just randomly going wherever it wants to go based on the numbers I put in. So that's me just having fun, giving you guys a chance to play with it, uh, you know, to tinker with it. Uh, start messing around with the transformations. Figure out what might be fun to do. So this is pretty much where we're going to leave off the lesson. Um, in the descriptions, I'll have uh, more links to other things, uh, some videos that are great to help you learn about vectors and matrices. Um, a lot of them come from uh, a channel called Coding Math. It's a great thing if you want to learn math, especially when you want to start dealing with a lot more complicated things with shaders and game development in general. You really want to learn all that math. So uh, a lot of the math I am uh, utilizing actually comes from that um that YouTube series. So you sh I highly suggest watching it from the first video and on. You'll learn quite a lot of mathematics. And you'll actually learn how to draw using uh, HTML canvas. I it won't be the WebGL canvas. It's the same canvas, but you'll be doing dealing with uh, 2D, transfer, um, 2D drawing, not 3D. And it's done a lot differently. And it's actually a lot easier in a lot of ways to use regular canvas than WebGL canvas. So uh, hopefully you had fun and you got a lot of out of this and um, you get to see that we're now start really doing some things and things are starting to look 3D, especially when we start rotating things around on our um, uh, on a specific axis. Uh, in the next lesson, we're going to do cameras and that's pretty much going to be the end of our starting bed. Of we're really start having fun. Uh, and cameras is really just pretty much the same thing. It's just more transformations. But there's a little bit of magic when it comes to cameras because cameras are transformations, but slightly different. And I'll go in deep into that in the next lesson. So if you really like what you got, what uh, what we didn't tell you, you know, don't forget like, subscribe. Uh, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. I'll answer you, get back to you as soon as I can. Um, that's it. And I hope you guys have fun, and see you guys in at the next lesson.